time for an investigation? I think so. Have you ever wondered how accurate a measurement rate of perceived exertion is compared to heart rate? Well, each has its own advantages and you may have your own personal preference. Or maybe that actually changes depending on the sport you're doing or the effort or intensity level you're working at. Well, we're going to be discussing that today as well as putting ourselves to the test to see how close we can get our RPE to our heart rate. It's time to put our feelings to the test. Are you a stickler for using your heart rate or are you someone who prefers the more fluid scale of RPE? Or maybe you don't use either and you like to purely go off pace or power when it comes to your training. Well, whatever your preferences are, we're here to uncover the pros and the cons behind using heart rate and RPE for your training and pacing. Yeah, well, I've got to be honest, I'm quite a fan of RPE, so I'm going to start with the uh, the advantages of RPE, but don't worry, we're going to balance this out. Heather's going to be jumping back in with the cons here. So first off, it's instant. You know how you feel at any given time. There's no waiting for devices or any measurements to catch up with that. And as a result, it can mean that you become more in tune with your body. You understand your body and how you feel, which can be incredibly valuable. Again, eliminating the need for those devices. And yeah, it means you're not as reliant on technology. I mean, should we have forgotten to have charged devices or things just fail on us, actually being able to listen to our body, gauge our effort well, could be invaluable. We also have the element of mixed terrains, perhaps going uphill or off-road. That is going to affect our pace or power output. And we want to be, make sure that we're gauging our effort again while we're maintaining a constant effort throughout. So that's really important there. And then there's also an interesting bit, but when we maybe feeling a little bit off. Perhaps we were going through a big training block, we're fatigued, we're tired, or just simply feeling off. Maybe there's illness involved there. And again, it's just listening to our body and still getting the value out of a session whilst maybe not necessarily sticking to those numbers that we have before. Yeah, well, a huge amount of points there, but obviously there are some disadvantages to using RP. And the first one, and probably the most important, being accuracy, because it is affected by so many things, your mood especially, which could be affected by the weather or the time of day or just what's going on in your life. And you've got to try and sort of actually work out how exactly you're feeling and then how you record that. Say you're having to write it down so that the coach has got the information. Often when you finish a session, you'll remember it different to how you might have felt during it. So that's something that's quite hard to make sure you can replicate. And talking about training with a coach, it's very hard for them or yourself if you're coaching yourself to actually measure your improvements because how you feel might not necessarily show how your pace is relating to your heart rate. And again, on that same tone, but another thing is it's very hard to replicate the same session and get that same intensity or that same effort level because going back to the start, it can be affected by so many other things. And now moving on to heart rate. And I'm afraid, Heather, I'm going to steal the advantages again on the heart rate, but we'll come back in with the limitations very shortly. If anyone is using heart rate regularly, be well aware of and used to these advantages, uh, one of which is the reliability of heart rate. If you're using it regularly within workouts, test sessions, or anything like that, you'll be able to compare the numbers and the data you're getting from them from one to the next and hopefully see an improvement. It also reflects effort level, very simply, the more work you put in, the higher that number is going to climb and you are getting an actual number that you can record and keep hold of and, as I said, compare from one to the next. It can also indicate fatigue or illness. If you're using heart rate in repeat sessions or in fact taking your heart rate first thing in the morning and tracking that resting heart rate, it might alert some warning signs of fatigue or illness and you may be able to address that quite quickly. We also have the mixed terrain that we mentioned with RPE but also very valid on heart rate and actually in fact could be more accurate. So for instance going uphill we might see the pace drop but you may be able to keep the effort level the same and see that heart rate maintain. Yeah well loads of plus points for using heart rate but 
I'm afraid I'm coming with the negatives here. There are still quite a few limitations, and I think the first one that jumps to mind is the lag in your heart rate to actually reflect that change in effort level. So it will gradually move up as your effort increases. But if you're doing short intensities or short sprints, then heart rate kind of is redundant because by the time it's caught up, you're probably on your recovery. It's far better suited to doing those long, more sustained efforts. Also, you do require a certain amount of kit, and with that, there uh, can be some limitations. Do you use optical heart rate? Do you buy a heart rate monitor? Does it sync up with your watch, with your phone? There's just other technical aspects which you wouldn't have if you were using RPE. And then finally, it's actually, um, your heart rate can be affected by a few external factors such as the temperature. Uh, we've also got adrenaline and caffeine. I mean, they're mild, but they will affect your overall results. So there's just a few things to bear in mind when you are using heart rate. So then let's take a look at how to measure each. RPE, or rate of perceived exertion, has two scales. The original scale, known as the Borg scale of perceived exertion, was invented by Gunnar Borg in his work with rehabilitation of cardiac patients. The original scale goes from 6 to 20, which at first glance seems an odd range, but add a zero onto each number and you will soon see the obvious correlation with heart rate. Thankfully for all of us, Borg realised this could be modified to make it far simpler and Sue devised the revised scale known as the Borg CR10 scale that, surprise, surprise, went from 1 to 10. That is now the scale that the majority of clinical settings and sports testing will use. This then sits nicely alongside the breathlessness scale. They go hand in hand when trying to work out what level you are working at. In fact, you may have noticed that we often describe efforts on our training sessions as being conversational or just being able to say a couple of words, for example. And then heart rate. I don't think we need to spend long on how to measure heart rate. It's a technology that's been in the sport for decades and thanks to the invention of smartwatches, many of us have access to this measurement 24-7. It is worth being aware that wrist-based heart rate is using a different technology to the chest strap and is less accurate. It's known as optical heart rate and works by measuring the pressure change in the arteries and the capillaries as a result of each heartbeat. Therefore, your watch needs to be worn tight enough and covering the fleshy part of your wrist just up from your wrist bones. Well, the original chest strap heart rate measuring device actually picks up an ECG, the electrical signals from your heart, and as a result, is far more accurate. In fact, if you've done any lab testing, this will be accurate enough for noting any small changes. You might have seen or even owned a heart rate monitor that can be worn on the arm or the leg, for example, like the Ticker Fit, which I often use. Well, even though it's not on the wrist and you can place it in an area that might have greater blood flow, it is still relying on the pressure changes to obtain a heart rate reading. It's time for a bit of a fun experiment or more of a comparison between presenters. I'm going to be doing a run test and Mark is going to be doing a bike test. But this is a little bit unique because we're not going to be able to see our heart rate or in my case, my pace or in Mark's case, his power. And we're going to ride it and run at different intensities and have to try and work out what our heart rate is likely to be. So it's a bit of a, an experiment to see which presenter is more in tune with their body. And we've obviously got things coming into effect such as heat from indoor training and coffees that we've had this morning. So it could be quite interesting. I will be running on the treadmill and starting at a very steady pace of 9k an hour. From then on, the speed will be hidden and I won't have access to seeing my heart rate. Mark will be trusted with the speed of the treadmill and he'll be able to see my heart rate. At set points, I will have to guess my heart rate and later we'll see how close I was. Mark will then follow a similar test on the bike, but will use power instead of speed. He'll ride in erg mode, starting at just 100 watts. I'll be in charge and gradually increase it and ask him to guess his heart rate at various points, and we'll then see how in tune he is too. Okay, Heather, we're at 9K an hour, first stage. Um, watts, perceived effort exertion, and heart rate. Two out of 10, I feel like I can run this yeah. pace all day. Um, 110. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> I think I could be a bit of that. <laughs> um, we will bump the pace up. Okay. <laughs> Let the fun begin. 
not looking. All right, what speeds? What? Uh, I think it's about 11k an hour. Okay. And I am a three and a half out of 10. Okay, and heart rate? Uh, one, two, five. Is that interesting? <laughs> okay, let's go for it. What right. do you reckon pace-wise? I'm hoping it is 15 okay. and a half. <laughs> um, 7 out of 10 and 162 going up with the heat. Uh, okay, speed. Yeah. I'm hoping it's about 17 because okay. I'm running quite hard. Effort level. By my breathing. And Sorry, nine. What's that? <laughs> Are you? Are you? Nine. 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 Um, heart rate. One. Better be. One seven five. I feel like it's higher, but no. One seven nine. Okay. Ooh. All right. Let's stop there. Ooh. Well, you know your watts to start with, Mark, don't you? Hundred watts. Uh, it's two or three out of ten, I'd say. Um, and I think my heart rate is currently one o five. Okay. I feel like this is a test. It is like a test, doesn't it? I feel really it? under pressure. <laughs> that could affect your heart rate. It's like doing my you need to, again. You need to re bear that in mind. All right, do you want to give me a, an okay. ETA? Yeah, so I reckon I'm, uh, I don't think this has gone up much. I barely noticed it, so uh, <laughs> no joke. Uh, I think I'm up to about 150 now. Okay. So I think I'm still around three or four, maybe. And I think my heart rate is maybe about 120. All right, um, I've given you a few, a little bit more resistance. Where, right. where do you think you're at now? Definitely, I think I'm in the 200 range. I can say 200. Yeah. Um, yeah, four, five out of 10. Um, I'm a little bit short of breath. I mean, that's because I'm talking, but I think I'm about 125, 130. You've got to give me a number, because I can't do all the, you can't uh, have this huge range. 130. Okay, just, just go with it. I think it will start climbing quite quickly. Okay, you've leveled. Let's let's right. check in. Where? How good's your estimation on your power and your I effort? I think just below 300. I think maybe around like 285 or something like that. Uh, six to seven, say seven out of ten. Heart rate 160. Interesting. Yeah, we've got a level heart rate, so go on, give me your, your best. Okay. I think I'm um, 330. Uh, it's definitely hurting a little bit, so eight. Oh, and then uh, I am 170, 175. Which are you going for? Okay, 172. 172. Can I stop there? Yeah. Well, look, we were never going to uncover anything particularly scientific there, but it was interesting for us. I mean, how were your results? Yeah, but well, we got competitive as well, didn't we? Well, let's, let's take a look. So I was slightly overestimating my pace, so it shows I'm probably not as fit as I thought, but not too far out. Um, and the RPE, I think, looking back at it, would truly reflect where I... You were pretty close I... there. I was, I, I was impressed how close you were on, on the most part. Yeah, and then for heart rate, it was just the lower ones that I had no yeah. clue. My heart rate just took a long time to get going, I think. If I'd run at that pace, maybe for longer, or it was hot earlier on, 
I don't know. But yeah, towards the end, I was pretty damn well, close. I, I, yeah, I, I mean, I think actually you're doing a lot of running at the moment. You're quite in tune with the speed, intensity, yeah. and that goes to show you, are, I mean, considering you can't see the numbers, that was, that was very good. Yeah. Okay, what uh, about you then? I, I, I think yours, yeah. Well, I, I mean, I've got to say, I think I undersold myself. You I, did, I, I really massively. thought, um, yeah, I, I was... I, I thought I found it hard, but I thought, oh, the power is probably a lot lower. So towards the end, I mean, I, I thought it was probably like 3.30. You're holding forward to what's chatting to me. But I definitely, in my mind, back of my mind, I was thinking this is probably 400 watts, but maybe I'm just really unfit. Oh. Um, and so, yeah, like, I'm maybe just a little out of tune with that. And I think, you know, go back a few years, a bit more, you know, I used to do this all the time. It's very in tune with my body. And I think we would have seen some very different results there. Um, and I think this comes back to what we've been discussing here today is that, okay, they're not necessarily scientific doing RPE, but it's really important to be in tune with your body and to understand the, the intensity so you can potentially head out the door and hold a certain pace without having to look at the numbers all the time. And also, if you've got something niggling or whatever, you can react to that. But we've already talked all about that in depth. But we would love to know whether you guys train by RPE or heart rate or a combination of both. Please let us know in the comments section below. And hopefully you've enjoyed it and you appreciated our efforts there. Give us a like if so. And remember, you can hit on that globe and subscribe.